What's going on, everybody? Critic and the Common Man back with the PowerPoint. And up today, we are reviewing Princess Mononoke. Um, Christopher, I have an immediate question for you before we even get started. Did you watch this movie in like original Japanese voice with English dub? Or did you watch, or did like English cre uh, captions or whatever? Or did you watch it in English? Uh, I watched the English version. Okay, me too. I could not find the original like Japanese language with mm. English closed captions over it. So I ended up just watching the, uh, whichever one was available on Amazon prime, which was the, uh, woods or the HBO max one or whatever, which mm -hmm. was the English voiced one. So, um, I'm okay with that. As long as we watch the same one, then we know yeah. we're good. If you guys have not seen princess Mononoke, um, you've had a long time to see it, but to be fair, I think this was actually the first time I had ever watched it too. True. So, um, this is your one and only spoiler warning. Chris and I will be reviewing this movie in full so if you haven't seen it, go watch it, come back and let us know what you think. Chris, take it away, man. You know a lot more about this one than I do. Um, this was my first time watching this. I have a weird relationship with Studio Ghibli Films or Ghibli Films, however you pronounce it. Um, tell me about the first time you watched this one and then why you thought it'd be a fun one to watch this week. The first time I watched it was years ago. Um, yeah. And I just remember, I remember growing up with my neighbor Totoro and then I watched Spirited Away when it like a year or two after it came out back in like 2009 right. or 2010. So like those are the only two films I'd seen. And then I'd seen parts of Kiki's delivery service, whatever. Um, the point is I, I never saw princess Mononoke until a few years back. And when I did, I was expecting something friendly and you know, like it was, I don't know. I just, I thought it was going to be more in line with the films that he'd released, which is, you know, not so dark and more uh, geared towards younger audiences and stuff. But when I saw this 20 minutes in, you're watching people get decapitated and oh, yeah. their arms coming off and stuff. And I just remember like my mouth dropped and I was like, what is this? I was, I, I almost felt like I, I wasn't old enough to be watching it. Cause you know, this was like, you know, I was still in high school, and, but I don't remember which one, I don't remember which one came first, whether it was the samurai raiding the village and you see that dude get like his arm chopped off and then stabbed yeah. or him like with his demon hand decapitating somebody with an it arrow, the samurai cutting off the dude's hand first. Right. And it's in the right. distance. It, so for a moment you're like, wait, what did I yeah, just see that? It sets the tone. It sets the tone pretty fast for the kind of movie you're going to be watching. Yeah. Um, I had yeah. actually a, a better appreciation for all that after watching seven samurai. So if you guys have not seen Seven Samurai, it'll actually kind of inform you more about what it is to be a samurai and what that's all about. And so watching this movie, when you see these these villages being overrun by these samurai for hire, you understand what's actually going on there. Yeah. Um, really dark movie. I have a like I said, man. I have a weird relationship with those. Is it Studio Ghibli or Studio? I've Ghibli? always said Ghibli, but now sure. I don't know. Let's let's say Ghibli. Why not? Um, GIF versus GIF, right? So yep. I have. I had seen Spirited Away when I was younger. And as much as I was into manga and as much as I was into anime, I didn't really like it that much. Um, I don't know if I was like just too cool for school back then and mm. like it was not tough enough or like actiony enough for me. Uh, maybe that's what was going on. But I feel like even if I had seen this one back in the day, I would have enjoyed it. Um, so I was I was a little bit hesitant to watch this when you suggested it, only because those movies, Spirited Away, mm. um, the other one, the guy with like the 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 face dude, I don't remember. Um, there's a couple of them that I just am not a huge fan of. This was to me much much better. Um, a little bit darker, well, a lot darker story, yeah. but not just a darker story, but a really really good story too. So apparently, uh, a mononoke. Because I looked it up, a mononoke is a spirit. It's a it's a type of demon. So the fact that she is Princess Mononoke. Um, just kind of, you know, tells you what the movie's going to be uh, be about. You know, it's you know she is like in, uh, the princess of the spirits or of the demons, and and I just I never really understood why it was called that, and so I had to Google it. But anyways, um, yeah, it is it is a very dark movie with like at the core of it is just a film about man, like it's it's about machines ver and industry versus nature, yeah, um, and and really about like uh, industrialization and. And, and the clashing of the two and the destruction of the planet. And uh, it's it's a huge commentary on on just the environment and, and man's part in the destruction of it. Um, 
Yeah, we've and it's a story that we've heard multiple times. I mm-hmm. mean, it's it's Avatar. It's uh, many, many more. <laughs> I'm like, it's a story we've heard many times. You know, Avatar. I don't know. I'm sure it's in there. I'm, I'm sure it's in there a few other times for sure. But uh, <laughs> many, that, that class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a story we've heard a hundred times. Avatar and ninety nine others. Um, cricket, cricket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's. Uh, I was kind of freaked out a little bit in this movie too. Like it's almost kind of scary Yeah. Uh, when you see that disturbing. boar come out of the woods and it's covered in those demon worms and you can only see its eyes. It's like, it's kind of, it's gross. Man. Yeah. And not just that, but when it like, they think it's dead and like, she's it's offering like her, her like prayers to it. And it's just like, you yeah. filthy creatures. And I was like, Ugh. it's like, that's fucking Ugh, it's alive. Yeah. It, yeah. They're like, we pray to you, Lord, blah, blah. And he's like, fuck you. <laughs> it reminded me of, um, 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 Independence Day when the alien has that dude yes. like wrapped around the neck he's yes. like what do you want us to do and he's like death die yeah oh yeah. Uh, yeah classic Um, yeah I was a little worried man just again because the movies that we'd seen from the studio in the past that this art style in particular this like classic anime style can be a little bit dry to me sometimes too like it's it, yeah, it, like okay. literally dry it feels like it's like drawn on with colored pencils or something like because it is you, it, you it's, want it's, more it's you it's celluloid painting so it's um celluloid cellulite okay that's not correct <laughs> cellulite isn't sure. that like fat cells and i'm fat pretty cells sure that's cellulite. a medical condition yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, they pick a guy with a lot of cellulite, and they they just have him paint all these yeah. these pictures. It really it really changes. The you art can do style. it, Jimmy. Um, so we got Castle in the Sky, Howl's Moving Castle, Spirited Away, Nausicaa. What is that? Nausicaa. Yeah, I've never seen those. So again, the only one I've actually ever seen was Spirited Away. And I've Ponyo, heard Howl's Moving Castle recently. is pretty good. Howl's Moving um, Castle, I also just watched recently, like for the first time ever. I'd actually never seen that one before. And it is, uh, it is up there as one of my favorites. Uh, it's, really, it was, dude, Christian Bale plays the main the main guy in the English version. Huh. Yeah. So. so I saw something on YouTube after we had watched this, which is I guess I had just looked up a clip from the movie, and that's why like I got this in my suggested. But it was the the wolf goddess or mm-hmm. what a spirit, uh, Haro? Mm-hmm. What is it? It starts with an M, I think, right, or an N? Uh, Moro, Moro, I believe. Uh, yeah, Wolf God Moro. Um, it was him laughing in all the different languages that they recorded this, I saw this that. movie yeah. in. Because it was like, this This has been dubbed in so many languages. It's such a popular film that each one has a different actor. Mm-hmm. And so it's him It's him laughing. And sometimes it's a female doing the voice. Sometimes it's a male. But that was pretty interesting to see how they've yeah. dubbed this over so many different times. Well, and, and that's just a testament to like how archetypal the story is. And, and how good the film is that they translated into so many different languages because so many people want to see it. Um, on, I, honestly, man, like just, it really is just a compelling story about somebody who's leaving their village, leaves everything behind. They even say to him, after, after you leave today, you're dead to us because he's tainted by this demon. Um, yeah. and, and they say, like, we're not allowed to watch you leave. Like, he, he never sees his family again. And, and it's just about him doing his part to try and stop this war from going on. And, 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 and I like that there's like, there is some love interest there, but not really, you know, like you can tell yeah, that there's a up, connection. Right. Like they don't end up doing like the, the Ray and Kylo bullshit where they like make out at the end and yeah. it, like, it kind of ruins the thing. They it's stay, like just... they stay true to who they are. You know, she's like, I can't forgive humans, even though I am one. And he's, he can't, he can't abandon the human. So they they have to just learn to live with with you know what they've got for each other and um, just you know yeah. I the, was... the depiction of the demons and stuff it's just interesting and and to, to the the I think the one of the coolest parts is to see that the idea that the forests and everything used to have all of these creatures that could talk and because of humans and the destruction of the forest they turned into lesser uh, less intelligent beings that were just mm. animals. Um, that were just yeah pro- like instinctual beings yeah. basically i i was conflicted on whether i liked ashitaka's character or not mm-hmm. because for how much this dude runs back and forth and for all the things he does he lets a lot of shit go down yeah. that like he didn't <laughs> need agree. to let go down man and like he's he kind of seems to flip sides back and forth you know at one moment he's he's trying to protect the forest and save everybody 
And then he has opportunities to stop the people that are just marching into the forest to kill all these beasts, and he kind of doesn't do it, and then... That's... Uh, I don't know. And, and then right at the end there, it's like he saves the day, but only kind of. He's already let, you know, these forest god, the deer god thing, he's already let that be killed. It got his freaking head blown off, and yeah. it turns into this ridiculous demon beast. I just, I was kind of, I was kind of having a love-hate relationship with his character. I wasn't really sure how I felt about him. That's, it's interesting that you bring that up because it is something that you see in pretty much all of, uh, Hayao Miyazaki's films um, because he takes characters and humanizes them like and, and he does this in all the movies but like another character that he did this in the movie was the woman who leads the village you you like her because she's powerful she's firm but she's also kind to the women of her village um, she took them from the streets and gave them a purpose and then on the flip side of that she's also a warmonger and and wants the destruction of the forest for for industry and so you see both sides of that and and it's, you see that with pretty much every every film that i've seen so far by studio ghibli that there's always an enemy or a villain or something that gets flipped and is no longer a villain so in spirited away we see mm-hmm. it with like um the big baby that you know and and the little harpy that goes around and tries to uh, find Chihiro in the movie but right. they get turned into a little mouse and a bird and then they're her friends and then the rest of the movie they're on her shoulder and she's like saving them and stuff because i think at the essence of it he's trying to tell the story of of not just a good versus evil thing it's that we're all kind of a shade of gray and i think he really portrays that in his movies um that there's two sides to every story and that there's a reason behind every everybody's actions and and so I, I personally, I think it's it's more compelling that way for, for a character because it it is easier to relate to rather than somebody who's like, nah, he's the hero. He's, you know, he's definitely like, but I, I agree with what you're saying. I feel like from like a main character's point of Bro, view. Bro, any, any film students watching this movie are going to plagiarize the shit off of what you just said. <laughs> you just like wrote an essay on, god damn. <laughs> All right. The, the critic, ladies and gentlemen, that was intense. Well said, dude. But well uh, said. it's almost like I went to school for this. Um, yeah, really. Well, her, but her, you're exactly right because the she she what she she something with four or five sim- syllables. I don't quite remember her name. Um, the main woman in this movie, mm-hmm. she was she was frustrating too because it's like she knew what she was doing when she was oh, yeah. marching into the forest and killing all these things, and then at the end, it's oh, I've changed my ways now. Mm-hmm. I've seen the light after she blew the head off of Shishigami, this yeah. this deer god, and after I can't she believe you remember has, that name. I totally have it pulled oh. up right next to me. And after she, um, after she like <laughs> destroyed, at all least these he's animals, honest, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> at least he's honest. I thought about going with it, but uh, no, there's no way people are buying that. Shishigami, uh, um, Moro, and Ashitaka, of course. I, I did remember Ashitaka, mm-hmm. um, and obviously Mononoke. But anyway, she was frustrating too because at the end of the film, you're just supposed to be okay with her and kind of like her, and it's. You just killed the god of this forest, and you just destroyed all these innocent creatures that were just living here peacefully, and you're raping the natural world of yep. all these things. And it's just, uh, I don't know. They they try to set these characters up to end up being really likable. Mm-hmm. I liked Mononoke, obviously, because she was true to who she was. Ashitaka, I guess, was true to who he was because he kind of flipped back and forth the whole time. But this female leader who's kind but firm, not a fan of her. Yeah. Not a fan of her character. It's... Uh... And again, like really just the whole village and everything, it just feels kind of dirty and grungy. Like they really portray humans as being like you can see the the color palette difference with like the grunginess, the grays, the the oranges of like the human village, very muted colors. And then when you're in the forest, it's freaking beautiful and green and and serene yeah. looking and everything like it, it. It's definitely taking a side on, you know, where he stands or where the director stands of. Uh, on the side of like you know what we're doing to our planet, but um, you, yeah, you there's know. a lot going on in the subtext of this movie. Absolutely. I feel like this is one you could really write a blog post about. Absolutely, like, dude. There's a lot going on in this film, um, so I can appreciate that for sure. Dude, the you know the best character in this movie to me was Ashitaka's uh, like red deer the elk, elk thing that he yeah. had. Yeah, the elk. That thing was amazing. Yeah, 
Like, dude, what could that not do? I want one of those things. It's, um, I want to ride it to work. Like, dude, you'll just be flying through red lights. He'll be jumping over cars <laughs> in the end. Like, that thing was insane. And I like that uh, when she first met it, it knew not to approach. Like, not uh, she. What did she say? When it, they were standing in the in uh in the water, and he didn't get onto the island, and she called it like she's like, oh, you're you're very wise, you know, not to step on the island or whatever. It's um even for a creature that doesn't communicate in the way that the other spirits do it, it really humanized like it totally humanized this am- animal for us and made it the uh, easier for us to kind of connect with it dude i thought they were gonna kill it i thought they were gonna do a red dead redemption 2 on us spoiler warning and shoot that thing in the in the ass at the end and i thought it was gonna die i was gonna be so upset <laughs> because this movie doesn't shy away from death either animal or human no, not and at it's, all. Al- it's almost freakier it's almost freakier nowadays to watch a movie that shows that level of animal death especially in like because you movie. see yeah you see people dying in movies all the time now it's it's we've become so desensitized to people being shot in a movie it's like you see somebody get shot and die and you literally are unfazed mm-hmm. but there is something about seeing a thousand boar blown up and killed and then people like wearing their skins and moving around and this mm-hmm. giant boar who's like destroyed and bleeding and vomiting blood like running for his life to try to get to a pool and I, I don't know. There's just something about that that just did not sit well with me. It was really freaky to, to watch. I agree, yeah. There's de- there's a lot of, like, disturbing imagery in this movie, and I think he did it on purpose. I know yeah, he did. Dude. Like, he he approved all those drawings and said, yes, that's the look I want. You know, like, he did it all on purpose to to send a message to us, and and uh, I think it's what makes this movie so incredible. Um, it, it In my opinion, is one of the best animated movies that's ever been released. It's powerful. I mean, as far as the storytelling goes and, and the the scale at which this movie was able to create things and create a world, I, it's up there. It's definitely up there. So um, I'm, I'm really curious about what your, your score is for it because... I liked it a lot. It was a... It was, a, it was way better than I thought it was going to be. And, and it was... I'm, I'm struggling to really think of too many negatives to say about it, honestly. I mean, it was... It was well, all even, there. Even it, personal aesthetic biases, I think, are something that you should, you know, take note of. Like, if you don't like the art style because it feels too '80s, that's totally, you know, acceptable. So yeah, and that, and as just from like a somebody sitting down watching this today for like the first time, that was a little bit of a problem for me because it just we're so used to the quality of things that we see now, and it's hard to. It's like when we watch any of the classic movies, man. It's hard to go back and watch a black and white. It's hard mm-hmm. to go back and watch a you know, an 80s feeling anime uh, uh, movie. And it, it is kind of tricky. The story was all there. The art style did kind of bug me, as it does with any of those Studio mm-hmm. Ghibli films. I've always kind of had that weird bias against it. Some them. people love totally it, some people per- hate it. Yeah. Totally. It's a totally personal thing. I would not push that on, like, anybody's rating of this film. If you like the art style, great. If you hate it, I understand. I, I, I don't hate it. It's just, if I'm going to watch anime or something... I'm a little bit biased towards the more modern feeling stuff where it's Absolutely. a little brighter, yeah. a little shinier, a little flashier. Well, the colors are just more saturated is what it is. It, it, it Definitely. feels... There's more depth to the, to the scenes and stuff. Yeah. I think I'm going it, to... It's hard, man, because this was fucking intense and it was dark and it was powerful and I really liked it. Oof. I think I'm going to come in on this one with an... And I'm saying and, so you can tell I'm going for a half here. I think I'm coming in on this one at somewhere between an eight and a half and a nine. Um, it's definitely up there. The story's all there. It was it was powerful. I didn't love the characters. They kind of bothered me with how they set up some of the characters. And it also kind of bothered me with how they just, it seemed like some of the main characters, Ashitaka and, and uh, being the main one, and even Moro and Mononoke, they almost sort of let things happen. And I know, obviously, Mononoke's worried about getting shot, and, and Moro's worried about getting shot, and that's all valid. I feel like Ashitaka could have done a little more. His character bothered me. I think I'm going to come at this one at an, with an 8.5. And, um, and I think people may be upset that that's too low, because I know <laughs> this is a classic, and a lot of people really love this one. I think I'm pretty confident in that score. I'm, I'm going to stick at an 8.5, and, and, and I'm... I'm accepting the consequences on to you what do you think about this one i'm interested to hear what you have to say i think at the at the root of it it's an again it's an archetypal story um i love the 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 use of this like iron ball as like the propelling moment for 
for the story where you know you're not sure what it is like you really don't know what it is you don't see that and think oh bullet you know um, because true. we're so used to seeing you know the, the actual bullet shape you know um but this is you know it's a, it's a mini ball it's an old school bullet um and uh and to just dr- use that as the driving force of the story and then throwing this you know kind of archaic lifestyle living young man into this new world um, we're kind of, we go along with him and it's really entertaining and intriguing for us because we're seeing everything as new in the same way that he is. And it just kind of gives us this world to this, you know, like we ha- we're just supposed to accept that there's spirits and demons and, and all these things. And it's, you know, it's just normal for them. Um, like when they're being guided through the forest by these things and, um, it's just it's it, there's something those things were those things were weird to me by the way the little naked spirit yeah, guys. my wife thought like, they were adorable and i was like okay like the, it's there's something weirdly adorable but also disturbing about uh, some of the things that he does it's 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 a very strange strange person that that makes these movies um yeah uh and and again that's an aesthetic thing for everybody but from just a story point of view i think it's it's a very compelling story uh, I again, I like that it kind of humanizes the different characters and doesn't make them strictly good or strictly bad. Um, I I, th- I really do think that he is one of the best directors uh, of our time, um, especially when it comes to these animated films. It, there's something very endearing about his art style and about his the stories that he creates. Um, I don't know. It's it leaves a lasting. This is a movie that leaves a lasting impression, and uh, I I think I'm gonna go with a nine. Yeah, I I, I can understand that. Every, I completely agree with everything you said, and that's a valid point about a lasting impression too, man. Because I'm not I'm certainly not gonna forget this movie. Mm-hmm. I might forget certain names. I might forget you know some minor things, but as far as the actual story and some of the that imagery, I think is burned into my mind. Yeah. like that those demons like. Uh, uh, Mononoke being sucked into the worm demons yeah. on that boar beast when yeah. she's being captured, and then Moro coming in and ripping at him and trying to get into. It. I mean, ooh, it was just just freaky, man. Like it makes your skin crawl when you're watching it. But yeah. I, I mean, like you said, it's an aesthetic choice for sure. Um, for me, I think that throws me off of it a little bit. But mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. It's a very interesting, interesting studio that's making these a very fascinating director. That's it, man. You got anything else for Princess Mononoke before we jump into our current event for today? Uh, no. Guys, let us know what you think of Princess Mononoke. I know this one's been out for a long time. This was a 97 movie, I believe. Uh, um, I think so. I believe 19, uh, 99. It says in the USA it was released in 99. It was probably Japan 1997, so right around the turn of the century. But I know this is a classic. I know a lot of people. This is a serious cult classic, too. A lot. I know of that it also very, got very, very re-released at some point when because like they made a con like i think it came out in like the 80s and then it was re-released and redubbed because of Di- a partnership with disney uh, so i think okay. it's actually older oh i don't think that. i i don't think i said by the way but this one was re- was received really highly by both the critic by both the critic score oh, yeah, and the audience yeah, score totally it got didn't. a uh, i totally forgot it got a 93 percent critic score and a 94 percent audience score so very wow. very high remarks uh for princess mononoke not surprised mm-hmm. not surprised it's a very powerful film um, so there you go. Let us know what you guys think down below of Princess Mononoke. Uh, let us know what you thought of the review. If you agree or disagree with what we were saying here, we'd love to get some feedback. We will interact with you. Current event for today, Chris. Um, Liam Neeson is set to play in a new movie called The Marksman. Um, and I, I got to be honest with you, man. I'm starting to feel like Liam Neeson. And I don't know if starting to feel is the right word, but I, I'm feeling like these Liam Neeson movies are just – it's. It's kind of just one after another. There's, they're kind of all turning a bit unremarkable. Mm-hmm. He's, he's sort of falling into that Jason Statham thing where he's doing the Transporter Ten. Yeah. Um, Liam Neeson seems to be doing Taken. They're, they're beating around the bush. How can we make another Taken movie without calling it Taken? Mm-hmm. Um, and this one, it sounds like the plot is going to be Liam Neeson is obviously a sharpshooter, um, likely an ex-soldier or something like that. He witnesses some cartel things going on at the border and violence ensues you can kind of imagine what's going <laughs> to happen things from there. happened and things happen and liam neeson things happen um how do you feel about that man liam neeson coming out in a new movie are you excited about that at all or as liam neeson has that bulb just sort of burnt out a little bit i for you? you know like i love his voice like obviously everybody loves his voice there's his voice you can pick it out there's very few actors where you hear a voice and you're like i know exactly who that is 
Um, That's true. But I, I, I feel indifferent. You know, I'm not like, oh yeah, another Liam Neeson movie. Like hell yeah. It's, it's just, I, I think it's one of those, um, he's an incredible actor that I think hasn't gotten a chance to show what he's truly capable of a film at, you know, from our generation that has wowed audiences. Um, but it, it's funny that you bring him up because speaking of studio Ghibli, he's in Ponyo. He plays the, the main guy in Ponyo, which is, I think studio oh, really? Ghibli's newest film. Yeah. It's a small world. Yeah. It's a small world that Hollywood. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. It's like, you know what you're going to get with Liam Neeson mm-hmm. now. And it's not that it's going to be a bad film. I'm sure it won't. But you can pretty much tell exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. He's going to get hurt. He's going to get in some danger. Maybe someone will be taken from him. No pun intended. I mean, literally, they do that a lot. Maybe someone will be taken from him. Um, and he's trying to get him back or he's trying to defend himself. He's going to kill some people. He's going to save the day at the end. I mean, it's just going to be, you already know what you're getting before you even mm-hmm. really get it. It's like uh, it's like Nick Cage now. You pretty much know you're getting yes. a B-list movie that's going to be kind of good for some cheap laughs and kind of a cheesy plot. Um, I don't know. I think this one's going to come out on, I don't think it's going to be a Netflix instant release, but I'm sure they'll be streaming it before too long. So I'm um, supposed to come out, I think, by the end of the month here or, or in a couple months, depending on when this when this uh, video is released. But keep an eye out, you guys, for Liam Neeson coming up in a new film, The Marksman. The Marksman. Um, we'll see how that one ends up being. I have a very That's it, man. Just a skills. quick current event for today. Uh, I was excited. I'm glad you recommended Princess Mononoke because, again, this is one I hadn't seen. I have a love-hate relationship with Studio Ghibli um, that prior to Princess Mononoke teetered more on the hate side. Um, mm-hmm. And so this has kind of brought me back and rationalized me on that a little bit. So I appreciate it. You got anything else for today, Chris? Uh, I have a very particular set of skills. Uh, um, and, and I will find you. And I he will means more you. to me than you will ever know. Oh, my God. The Mando version. <laughs> I love it. Um, if you guys haven't seen our Mandalorian reviews, go check those out too. We're obviously done with them, but the or season else. finale review came out not that long ago. Um, yeah, or else. I have a particular set of skills. That's it, Chris. Spirit us away. Um, we are out of here. Princess Mononoke, guys, let us know what you think. Jump over to Critic and the Common Man on Instagram. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. We do all kinds of movie, TV show reviews, uh, short film kind of stuff. Check out our channel, see what you think. Uh, going over to our website, www.criticandthecommonman.com. You can see a comprehensive list updated by yours truly every week on all the movies we've ever reviewed. You can get a feel for our rankings, see if you agree, disagree. Um, show some love on, on Instagram. Get involved with the channel. We will engage back. We love to hear what you guys have to say. Critic and the Common Man, that was Princess Mononoke. We will see you guys in the next review. 